Hi, I'm Gabby Bernstein. Hi, I'm Dr. Lise. Hi, I'm Farnoosh Tarabi. Hi, this is Christelle Lynn, and you're listening to me on That, that Total, Total Mom I want lipsticks for everyone, even when I was making foundations. We've been building these direct consumer media brands, and I really thought there was a space for a more storytelling premium led video brand for women. I started a beauty brand out of my apartment, and now to be a black female founder at Unilever, um, there's been some incredible key learning. Perception that motherhood softens you, mm -hmm. it has softened me towards them. Right, right. But it has toughened me like nobody's business. I'm Kanika Chara Gupta, and I'm the host of a podcast where I cover topics like what to expect when you're done expecting, finding your purpose, and I interview influential mamas on their secrets to success. Only when I became pregnant with my twins did I start paying attention to the labels on my skincare and beauty products. The first thing I stopped using was Retin-A tretinoin in pregnancy because it can cause birth defects. And then I began noticing that even the clean uh, beauty products I was using still had ingredients that I couldn't pronounce. Today, I'm featuring a woman who's been there, done that, and as a makeup artist, made it her mission to launch her own line called Mommy Makeup, the best beauty for busy women. Deborah Rubin Roberts is an award-winning makeup artist and New York City mom. She has over 20 years of experience as a professional makeup artist and has worked with some of the best in the cosmetic industry, including Bobbi Brown, Laura Mercier, NARS, Smashbox, Givenchy, Estee Lauder, and Prescriptives. Her work has been featured in various publications, including The Daily News, Avenue Magazine, and Manhattan Bride Magazine. Her clients include women and men of every ethnicity and celebrities, including Joan London, Rhea Perlman, and Denise Richards. In addition to being the founder of Mommy Makeup, Deborah is a working makeup artist and works on studio shoots, fashion shows, including 7th on 6th, video and television. Her work has appeared on 60 Minutes and CBS Sunday Morning. You may have also seen her on E! Entertainment and The Maury Povich Show. Although her passion is beauty, Deborah's heart is committed to her daughters, husband, and sweet cats. Deborah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Tell us about your career as a makeup artist. When did you start experimenting with makeup? Color and design have been in my life since like birth. My mother, God rest her soul, was an interior designer. And my grandmother was a fur designer when in the 40s and 50s, when it wasn't chic to be a working mom, my grandmother was. So I grew up with color and design and everything around me all the time. And then when I was in college, I took stage makeup as part of uh, my courses. And after I graduated for a very long time, I had two careers. I'd work as an actress and also as a makeup artist. I'd do a show. I would do makeup for someone's headshots for one of my cast members. The photographer would like what I would do. They would hire me for other things. Then I also got into working with brands. Then I had my first daughter. I didn't want to be doing any more acting. I stopped. And I just was one of those people where Moms would ask me, I joined this like new moms group mm -hmm. and they would like all ask me, like, I have no time to do my makeup anymore. How do you do it? You're a makeup artist. What, what's the deal? What's your and, yeah. Yeah. So I got a lot of that and that, you know, eventually led to, to mommy makeup. Awesome. And, you know, you've worked with a slew of brands. What were some of your key learnings when you were, you know, involved in that space? Brands, so this was like in the 90s and the early 2000s. And then brands very much were into fashion. So like if you saw it on the runway, you should, they thought that it should be out there for everybody. Yeah. And it was very intimidating, I found, to a lot of people. You know, I would do their makeup and they would like be like, oh my goodness, I uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to wear navy blue eyeshadow, smoky mm -hmm. eye to go pick up my kindergartner. Right. Um, and it, the whole process had like this mystique and this very intimidating kind of feel to it. And one of the things I always 
did and started to do and still do is I try to make it easier and simpler for people to understand. I always use analogies. I would say to uh, my clients, you would not walk out of your house wearing pink earrings, an orange necklace, a green belt, and a blue handbag. But you would be surprised you would see women wearing like coral blush and pink lipstick. So right. I would always try to explain to them that makeup is like an accessory. Think of it as your jewelry. Think of it as like your handbag and your belt. You want to try to match your belt and your shoes. So coming up with analogies to take all the mystique away. Yes, that was a big thing that. that I did. I feel like as consumers, we are way more discerning. And when you're a parent, even more so, because we're already le- reading the labels for our kids and what we're feeding them and what we're putting on their skin, which is our largest organ. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, you being an insider, you've seen uh, the regulations and the very toxic ingredients that go into cosmetics. And a lot of times we're duped. They're touted as clean or organic, but they're not. So can you tell us about that? And what are, you know, some of the things we should look out for when it comes to marketing and and not buy into it? I've always had very sensitive skin. Like when I was a kid, you know, I'd wear a mohair sweater and I'd get a rash. So that kind of like was something that always was very important to me. And I was always very conscious of what's in what I'm putting on my skin. I'm not a big fan of the ingredient talc. I always say talc is a four letter word. It scratches the skin. It's drying. There's been all of these claims and uh, research shown that no matter how refined the talc is, asbestos is been coming up in it and oh that Lee, you know, and the whole Johnson and Johnson baby powder thing and all of that. So I try to avoid talc at all costs. And so when I just thought, got this idea to do create mommy makeup, I wanted the whole line to be talc free. And I also wanted it to be paraben free. Paraben is usually a preservative, but it's been shown that paraben can cause like hormonal changes or doesn't always affect the hormones in a good way. So make everything paraben free as well. Um, And then it was really your aha moment after you became a mom that you came up with the concept, right? It was, yes, you know, in your mommy group and you thought, you know what, I could do this. My older daughter was probably about three weeks old and my mom was staying with us to help out a little bit because I was still getting the hang of being a new mom. And she said, go out to dinner. And I like, she goes, go get dressed. And I went into our bathroom and I tried to put my makeup on and I had 13 products in front of me, each with its own brush. At the time before I had my daughter, I was working at Bobby Brown and I loved Bobby's products and I loved the look, but there were too many products, too many brushes and too many steps just to get your basic polished look. Mm. And that night, I think I just threw on mascara and ran out the door. And so that was like the aha moment where I'm like, I'm going to have to figure out a way how to pare this down because I like looking the way I looked when I had makeup on. But like you said, I joined this mommy group and they're all asking me, you know, how do I do this? I, the, the, my kid's napping for an hour and a half and I barely have time to like unload the dishwasher or put on my makeup and I have to choose which. And the makeup process shouldn't have to be that long. You should be able to do both, unload the dishwasher and put your makeup on. Right. So between my Going out to dinner moment and being in the mom group, that was the aha moment that gave me the spark to develop mommy makeup. And like that was the catalyst for naming the brand mommy makeup because it was becoming a mom that led to that. Tell us some of the key products. Everything multitasks so that you can, rather than using 13 products, you can do it basically in six. One of the big, the most popular and my favorite is probably what we call Mommy's Little Helper Concealer Mm -hmm. because it is an under eye concealer. It's a face cover up. If you're wearing a powder eyeshadow, you can use it on your lid. Or if you don't want to wear eyeshadow, it just brightens your lid up. It's talc free. It's paraben free. You can use it many different ways. You could, <laughs> you can use it. You can you like do what I call spot concealing, where you just use it where you use it with a blender, a teardrop blender sponge, and use it all over your face. So it's a very versatile product. So that's one of my most favorites. Yes, and I mean as moms and parents, we are sleep deprived, and I think the first thing we want to cover up is the under eye circles. 
Yeah. And um, so this is our best friend. What are some of your favorites? Because I know I'm going to share mine. There's a, a newer product that's become a big favorite of mine. It's called Powder Perfect Color. It comes in a little compact with a flip cap and you can use it as eyeshadow, as blush, but you could also even take a little on your finger and pat it on and use it as lip color. I'm actually wearing that right now on my eyes, my cheeks, and my lips. The thing I also love about them, they're very wearable and they work on like all skin tones. It'll look different on every skin tone. Like it might look more muted on a deeper complexion and more brighter on a lighter complexion, but it works on all complexions and it comes in five colors. And the color I have on now is called Peach Tart Lake. And you've been uh, mindful of being inclusive. I mean, we're two different skin tones. Uh, mine is uh, more weedish and Tell us about that range so that you really are serving every face. We try our best to go from the lightest of the light to a much deeper complexion. Uh, We have a range of five shades, but because the shades, and again, they're they're no talc, so they don't leave any of that whitish pigment on the skin. I wear our mineral dual powder in the lightest shade called, uh, no, the lightest shade is baby's breath. So I wear the second lightest called lullaby. But Lullaby has a big range to it where someone who's even a little lighter than me or even a little deeper than I am can still wear Lullaby because it kind of blends in with your own skin tone and your body chemistry. Um, I'm going to share some of my favorites and thank you so much for spoiling me. It's the eyebrow tint and it has um, microfibers that add like a natural fullness to my eyebrows. I love Mm -hmm. it. The color is spot on. It's just a warm brunette. And it melds in with my dark brown, blackish eyebrows perfectly. I like your paddle bl- uh, blender. It's oh, really yeah. small and the um, brush bristles are so soft. All the brush bristles are vegan. There's no, everything is cruelty free. There's no animal testing. Uh, they're made of like this Japanese silk fiber combination so they really give maximum performance, but they, like you said, they feel very soft in the skin. Little yes. tip with your brow tint in between your hair. I don't know if you color your hair or not. If you start getting the little like grays and stuff, you can uh-huh. use it like right there on the roots to color oh, in the grays too. Nice hack. Yeah, that's great. And then I also love the uh, mineral dual powder. It's great. And then the kabuki that comes with it and a little holder. It's a big pet peeve of mine because I'm super clean, organized. And the fact that we're keeping the brush separate and in the little kabuki holder is key so that there's not powder all over your makeup bag after that. True. With the little the little bag that it comes in, we we nickname that the kabaggy. Oh, I love it. The, ka- the, the kabuki goes in the kabaggy. Yeah, that is so cute. And then the last thing I want to share is Tess. This is Mm -hmm. a triple stick. And I love that the color is a beautiful berry color. I know it's going to appear different on various skin tones, but this is something that I use on my lips and my cheeks. And it's just a quick dab, dab, dab and go. We shot some video this week of uh, new triple stick colors we're coming out with. And I, the shooting the videos, I like to do my own makeup in the videos because I always say to people, you won't finish your makeup unless you know how to use it. So I, we have all these video tutorials where I put on my own makeup and explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and how I'm doing it so that everyone knows how to use their own makeup. That's and cool. uh, we, sh- we shot a bunch of these videos and it made me it reminded me like, oh, wow, I do like triple sticks a lot. And one thing that's very unique to the brand is that you do a free color consultation. And I think this is brilliant. Um, I remember going with my mom to the prescriptives and the clinic counter and getting it done in person. You know, it was a process, but we're in a completely different age now Mm -hmm. where, you know, we, we don't have the time we're strapped for time. Uh, we're busy. We don't go to makeup counters to purchase our makeups anymore. And so we just want something that's going to arrive at our doorstep um, and be the right shade. And so you've automated all that where all you have to do is upload a selfie, hopefully a non-makeup selfie, so you can see this blank canvas of any 
uh, client. And then uh, you just advise them on the shades that they should buy, right? Yeah, this whole thing started. We call uh, your free color consultation, or we also nickname it Send Us Your Selfie, but it really is a free color consultation. It started because uh, we started getting a, we offer a 30 day, no questions asked, return and exchange policy. And we started getting a lot of exchanges as the brand was growing because sometimes people look at themselves in the mirror and they'll think, oh, I'm a medium. And they order medium when they're really not, they're light medium. If I could see, and if our team could see our clients' faces, then we could suggest the appropriate product and the appropriate shade because we know how the products work on the skin. And everyone's skin is a little different, you know, your body chemistry, if you're an oily skin, if you're a dry skin, if you take a lot of vitamin C, all those things affect how your skin accepts the color. So if we could look at you with no makeup on, then we could suggest what would be the best fit for you in the color, in the product that you're interested in. And then we said, well, you know, it's a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a job or a little bit of work to take your selfie and, you know, email it into us or send it to us through messenger. So in return, we, we, we give you a $10 gift card after you get your selfie. We look at your selfie. We then suggest the shades that are appropriate for you. And we give you a few options. We'll give you like three or four choices because some people might say, oh, I'm not a big fan of, you know, an apricot color. Oh, but this rose color would work. So they could have choices and we send back the info. And then at the end of the email, we give you a link to go and get your $10 gift card that you can use towards your order. You are also uh, very categorically made in the USA. So tell us about that. Are, you know, most cosmetics aren't made in the USA, are they? Not really. A lot of them are made overseas and certain countries have uh, strict regulations about cosmetics and skincare and personal care products. And other countries don't have very strict uh, guidelines and uh, regulations. So for us, we wanted to make it made in the USA because this way we know what's in the product. If there's a problem, if, you know, there's a, a batch that, you know, is exposed to too much heat during shipping or something and, This way we can fix it here at home. And we also feel like we want to be able to, you know, support the economy and everybody who works in our country's economy. And this this is a a big, important uh, part of our our mission. Certain countries like Korea, Thailand, Germany, France, Italy, products that are made there. They, uh, those countries have even stricter guidelines than the U.S. does. But if you see something that says made in peace, PRC, People's Republic of China, I don't care what it is, if it's going on your skin or on your face, that's just personally me. I would steer away from that. Uh, so tell us about a mom sense moment that you've had. And by that, I mean a time that you trusted that built-in sixth sense that we get when we're parents and why you felt like I'm going to follow my intuition with this one. Something that stands out to me in particular, my younger daughter, when she was born, she, her hips were like crazy flexible. I, and I took her to the, you know, when you go through a diaper change, her, her legs would be like, she was doing a split practically. Oh. And I took it to the doctor and I said, I think she may have hip dysplasia. And they're like, no, she doesn't have hip dysplasia after they examined her, but her hips are very, very loose. And then sure enough, as she gets older, uh, and then we're not talking a couple months come by and she's not actually crawling on all fours. She's doing like the army commando pro. Mm-hmm. And I said, I bet you this is related to her hips. And so she was a late crawler. And then when they start pulling themselves up, she's pulling herself up, but she's not walking. It's now 15 months and she should be walking on her own. And she's not, she's kind of cruising and holding on to stuff, but she's not walking on her own. So we go back to the pediatrician and they, her hips were so flexible that she, they kept flipping back when she would stand up. And so that she needed to be able to tuck her pelvis under in order to be able to walk. That was the, Mm -hmm. so the, her hips weren't as hypermobility. That's what she Mm -hmm. had. She has hypermobility in her hips. She went for physical therapy from when she was like 15 months to about 
two years and 11 months. And then she was walking great. She didn't need physical therapy anymore. And now she's a, a toddler. And so to keep her active, I said, oh, well, she's really flexible. Maybe she would like gymnastics. And we put her in gymnastics and she took to it like a fish took to water. And to this day, she is still a competitive gymnast. What are some of the lessons that you're passing on to your daughters? Big thing I think is empathy, Uh, trying to get them to uh, walk a mile in someone else's shoes, especially I think when they're little, you try to explain to them, this is how you feel, but think about maybe how the other person who you were dealing with in this situation felt. And is there a quote that you live by? Oh, there are a few. Um, Necessity is the mother of invention, because like I always say, that was the mother of invention. And that's the mother of mommy makeup, too. You know, the the fact that I needed something faster and quicker and easier that had clean ingredients that gave makeup artists quality results. That was the catalyst to creating the line and for calling it mommy makeup. And then my favorite, uh, one of a favorite quotes of mine, Coco Chanel always said, beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, fashion's fashion, runway is not reality. You have to do what works for you. I always say when you feel good, you look good. So you have to do physically, mentally, what feels good for you. And if you look in the mirror and you feel you look good, then your your whole day and the way you go through your whole day and present yourself to the rest of the world, you're going to feel happier doing that. Is there a product or a hack that you can share with us um, that you're loving right now? I'm a big fan of concealer. I love our mommy's little help concealer, but I'm also a big fan of eye cream, not eye gel. I find find that gel always kind of leaves the skin around the eyes kind of like tacky feeling, but Mm. cream absorbs and gives hydration. And I'm loving this from a Korean brand, Mizan, I think. Mm -hmm. And it is this snail repair eye cream. And the snail extract or this, uh, the, yeah, the secretion has tons of hyaluronic acid in it. And what hyaluronic acid does, it helps bind moisture to the skin. So, and this just happens naturally in the snail extract. So there's a lot of snail extract in the eye cream. And so it really binds moisture to the skin. Another key point when you're looking at your ingredient list, the order that the ingredients are in is the concentration in the product. So I always hate when I look at a a skincare uh, product and it'll say, contains avocado oil and avocado oil is the fourth to last ingredient. Mm. If it can, you're, you're saying it contains avocado oil, avocado oil should be like one of the first 10 ingredients. So this Mizan eye cream, the snail extract is like the second ingredient. So it has a lot of that. It's natural and it gives a lot of moisture to the skin. Another product I love is this thing I found on Amazon because People don't clean. I am as guilty as anybody about this. I clean my brushes for work when I'm doing my clients. I come home after I help a client. I clean. I clean all my brushes. But the brushes I use on myself, I'm guilty of not cleaning them enough. So there's yeah. this little uh, machine. It kind of has like it's not a machine. It has like a fishbowl with like a handle, and it's an electronic handle, and you stick the brush onto the handle. And you fill the fishbowl with sudsy water and you swish your brush around and you lift it up a little bit. So it's just outside the water and you press the button and it swirls around and it dries the brush super fast. And it takes cleaning your makeup brushes like five minutes instead of like having to wait for them to dry overnight. So that's that's another product. Amazing. I I love it. Now, where can my listeners find you and Mommy Makeup? Uh, MommyMakeup.com. And makeup has no spaces, no dashes, just mommy makeup, all one word, dot com. Uh, we're also on Amazon, big seller on uh, Amazon. I still do clients all the time. I got the idea of having my own website for clients when I was a bride. So it's bridalmakeupny.com. And, you know, I do socialites and weddings and all of that as well. But for products that mommy makeup uses and uh, offers, mommymakeup.com. 
That's wonderful. And I want to share that we are offering a code and it's MomSense, M-O-M-S-E-N-S-E. And that is for 20% off. Um, And so redeem that and, you know, start with your personal color consultation where you get all these recommended products to start. And then you can just go through the process. And I know you'll be a believer just like I am. (laughs) Deborah, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your story through motherhood and helping us simplify our makeup routine. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Were you like me and just wanting to do your makeup as you were listening to the episode? I love that Deborah came up with a concept for mommy makeup. The products are really wonderful. And the names, she has a powder called Rested, and there are hues like Lullaby. So they're reminiscent of your motherhood journey. And they're they're great that they have dual application. So I love the triple sticks. I use it as a lipstick and a blush. And I also love their tinted brow gel because of the microfibers. And it just, they make my brows really full and naturally darker. Log on to mommymakeup.com and use my code MOMSENSE, M-O-M-S-E-N-S-E, for 20% off your first order. And you can browse around the products. I'm sure you're going to find something that you love. Thanks again to Deborah and to Asa for making this partnership happen. This was super, super fun. And if you haven't already, subscribe, rate, and review my show. You can log on to thatstotalmomsense.com backslash iTunes, and you'll be directed to my Apple Podcasts profile. You can click on this episode and review it and tell us how you liked it. If you have suggestions for show topics or guests that should be on That's Total Mom Sense, just email me at thatstotalmomsense at gmail.com. And you can follow me on social. My handle is at Kanika Chada Gupta. And I'm posting some fun stuff on Instagram about mommy makeup and more. Remember, always trust your mom sense and dad sense. Stay strong, super parents. I'll see you next time.